Hi, 4.2 solving linear equations algebraically. So graphs do a decent job of helping find the solution. Um, by hand, it's easy to find them when your answers are whole numbers. But if you use a graphing calculator, um, you may not be able to pinpoint the solutions if they're fractions or decimals, unless you use a graphing calculator. Uh, the SAT has a no calculator section, so we gotta be able to do it another way. And the two methods we're gonna focus on today are substitution and elimination. And there's kind of different times when, when each tool should be used, each method. So let's look at solving by substitution first. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here. And so in general, I usually have a couple times when I use it. I like to use it when one of the equations is already solved in terms of a variable. So if you look at this example number one, we already have y equaled uh, y is all isolated by itself. Um, so what you can do is since y equals x plus 2, I can simply take that and I can substitute it in the second equation for y. So I'm going to write x plus, and instead of putting y, I'm going to put x plus 2, and that equals 8. And then you just solve it like normal, so I combine like terms. I get 2x plus 2 equals 8. Subtract 2 from both sides you get 2x equals 6, and divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 3. So there's the x part of the answer. So when I write my answer as an ordered pair, I know it's going to intersect. Those two lines are going to cross at 3 comma something. Well, then to get the uh, y value, you then have to take the 3 and plug it back into either equation for x. I'll plug it in the top. So y equals 3 plus 2, or y equals 5. And that's how you can kind of complete the final solution. All right, example 2, 2x plus y. And I think I made a typo here. So change this in your notes, otherwise you get nasty fractions. Um, but 2x plus y equals 6. Um, that way it'll come out nice and clean. So if you look here, it's one of our coefficients is a 1. So this is kind of another time where sometimes I use substitution. So for instance, if you look at both of the y values, they're both don't, they don't have a coefficient in front of it, so it's just one. So we could solve for that letter pretty easily. So in the top equation, uh, I'm gonna move that 2x to the other side, so I'll get negative 2x plus six. And then I can take this expression and I can plug it in for y. So I eliminate the y, so I'll have negative 2x plus six minus 8x equals 1, um, which is going to give me negative 10x plus 6 equals 1, minus 6 from both sides, negative 10x equals negative 5, and divide by a negative 10, divide by a negative 10, and we do get a fraction, but it's a friendly fraction, so x equals 1 half. And then you can go back to either equation, and you can plug it in. So I'm going to go up to that top equation. And I'm, instead of writing 2x, I'm going to do 2 times 1 half plus y equals 6, which is going to give me 1 plus y equals 6. And I will get y equals 5. So now I have x equals 1 half, y equals 5. I want to put that in an ordered pair. Um, I think if you're using teacher made, I probably just put 0 0.5 comma 5. And if you're unsure on any of these problems you do today, another thing you could do is you could go to Desmos. So I'm going to go over here to my computer and I'm going to open up Desmos. And I'm going to graph both of those. So I think the first equation we had 2x plus y equals 6. The nice thing about Desmos is you don't have to worry about solving it. Um, you don't have to solve it for Y. You can just put it in, unlike the uh, TI-84. And then my next equation is going to be Y minus 8X equals 1. Y minus 8X equals 1. And if I zoom out, I can find that intersection point. And right there, I can see that the, this gray dot where they cross, if i got to zoom in a little closer, I can. And I can see that 0.5 comma 5 is actually the solution. So Desmos is kind of a nice way 
to verify if what we're doing um, is correct. All right, solving linear systems by elimination. So let me kind of go through the steps. You don't need all of these steps for every single problem because different problems kind of pose different challenges. But I kind of try to put the steps for even the hardest questions uh, to, to, to deal with them. So number one is we want to clear any fractions by multiplying by the least common multiple of the denominators in that row. Examples three and four, there's no fractions, so you could skip step one. Step two is get X and Y lined up. Well, that's already done for me as well. If I peek down here, I have the X's, I have the Y's, I have the equal sign, and I have the constants or the numbers. And those are lined up in both problems. So I get to skip step two, which means this is a little bit easier. Now I'm trying to get opposite coefficients for one of the variables because I want to eliminate that variable. That's kind of where we get the name eliminate. Now sometimes I don't get so lucky and I'm going to have to multiply. That should be one or both rows. Multiply one or both rows if necessary. So let's kind of look through. Well, this first example, I looked out and I already have my opposites right here. I have a positive 3y and a negative 3y. So why I want opposites is because I want to combine these rows by addition and it'll cancel out the y's. So when I add up these rows, I'll get 6x, the y's cancel out, and I'll get a positive 30. And if I divide both sides by 6, I will end up with x equals 5. So there's my first part of my answer. Now, just like with substitution, I'm going to plug that back in. So maybe I'll go up here to the top equation, and I'll do 2 times x, which we now know, plus 3y excuse me, it's 34, so that's 10 plus 3y equals 34, subtract 10 from both sides, then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I get my y coordinate, so now I can enter my answer as 5 comma 8, which will be the point where the two lines cross. So that's what I consider an easy elimination problem because the coefficients were already opposites for me. When I look over here in number four, um, the two and the five aren't opposites and the six and the negative three aren't opposites. So I'm going to have to multiply one or both rows if necessary. I don't think I could multiply the top row to turn that two into a negative five unless I use decimals. But I do see an opportunity here with the y's. I think if I multiply this bottom row by 3, I'll get negative 6's to line up. And you got to multiply the whole row. So if I go over here to the, the right, my top row is going to stay the same. I'm not going to monkey with it. My bottom row, when I multiply, I'm going to get 15x. And I don't know why I did 3. This should actually be a 2. Um, so let's go back and let's fix that. So 2 times 5, that'll be 10x minus 6y. Now I got my opposites. And 88 times 2 is 176, I believe. Now we can go ahead and we can combine. We can add them up, eliminate the y's. I got 12x equals, that'd be 168, I believe. And 12 goes into 168, that's 148, looks like 14 times. So I get x equals 14 when I divide by 12. Now again, you can go back to any equation you want. You know, we have three different ones. We have this one, this one, or that one. Uh, I'll just go back to maybe this bottom one right here. So 5 times 14 minus 3y equals 88. I usually pick a row that doesn't have as many negatives or that's smaller. Whatever. 70 take away 3y is 88. Uh, minus 70 from both sides. I'll get negative 3y equals 18. And divide both sides by negative 3 and we get y equals negative 6. So now I have the ordered pair 14 comma negative 6 and we have a solution. So that one was kind of a, a mild problem. I mean, it wasn't perfectly set up. We had to multiply one row, make one small adjustment. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit tougher on these next ones. 
All right, so when I go to number five, number five is a little tricky because there's no fractions to deal with. That's cool. Uh, X's and Y's and numbers are all lined up. But I don't have opposites. And I don't think I can multiply two by something to make three. And I don't think I can multiply this three by something to make four. So this is going to be one where I'm going to have to, to multiply both rows. So these are a little bit more involved, a little bit tougher. Um, but I think maybe I'll try to cancel out my X's. So I think if I multiply the top by 3, that'll give me 6X. And I'll multiply the bottom by negative 2 because I want opposites. And that'll give me a negative 6X. So I think we're going to eliminate X here. You could have did it with the Y's and chose different numbers. That's totally fine. You'll get the same answer. That's 6X plus 12Y, negative 30. And that's negative 6X minus 6Y equals positive 6. Unfortunately, any small arithmetic error throws this whole thing out of whack, so be careful when you're doing it. I can now combine the rows. X's are eliminated. I end up with 6Y equals negative 24. Divide, divide. I get Y equals negative 4. Now be careful because sometimes kids do this part right, but then they substitute it into the wrong spot. So remember, I'm plugging in for Y. So I'm going to take that negative 4 and I'm going to put it right there. So I'm going to have 3X plus 3 times a negative 4 equals negative 3. That's 3X minus 12 is negative 3. Add 12 to both sides. 3X equals 9. Divide, divide. And I get the X part. So now I'm all set to write my final answer. 3 comma negative 4. Four. So that one I had to multiply both rows, so it was a little bit tougher. I had to come up with two totally new equations, but no big deal. That's fine. All right, when I go over here to number six, number six, our first thing I notice is it has a fraction. So we need to clear that fraction, and the only denominator in that row is a three. So I'm going to multiply by three. And just to kind of let you know, like on the homework, if you ended up with something like, maybe it was like a one-half X uh, plus a one-third Y equals some number, it doesn't really matter. Multiplying by two or three won't eliminate both of those. So when I talk about the least common multiple, you have to find the first number that two and three can go into, which would be a six. So in this case, you'd want to multiply everybody by six. And that would eliminate, so you'd end up with three X's, two Y's, and then six times whatever the number. And you kind of wipe out two fractions at once. So that would be a situation where you're multiplying by the least common multiple. But ours is a little easier. We only had the three. So when I redo this, I'm going to get three X um, minus one Y. Don't really have to write the, the negative one, but I like to. And negative six. Bottom row. Just 6x minus 2y equals negative 2. So I achieved my first goal. I got rid of my, uh, I got rid of my fraction. And if you're a little savvy and you're a little advanced, you might have been able to get rid of the fraction and get an opposite all in one swoop. But I'm going to do it in two steps. So now to get my opposites, I think I'm going to multiply the top row by negative 2. And that way I'll get a negative 6x, which will be opposites with that 6x. Um, I'm going to get a positive 2y, which, ooh, this one's kind of weird, because I have another opposite. On top I'm going to get 12, and here I have negative 2. Well, when I try to solve this algebraically, x's disappear, y's disappear. I end up with 0 on the left-hand side. So this is where we're going to have a freak case. Uh, when all your x's and y's disappear, we have a freak case going on. And when I add the right side, this is what's going to tell me whether it's no solution or whether it's infinite solution. I get 0 equals 10, which this is a false statement. Whenever you end up with a false statement, the answer is no solution. And recall from the graphs that when you have a no solution, that means we have the same slope, but we have different y-intercepts. 
And if you were to solve those two equations up there for y, you would see that they both have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. Now, just a little, a little kind of what-if scenario. If everything cancels out and you get 0 equals 0, which is a true statement, those are the problems that you're going to say infinite solutions. So 0 equals 0, everything wipes out, it's, it's the same line. If 0 equals 10, then, or 0 equals any other number, it's going to be a no solution. All right, so those are the mechanics. Now let's look at a common problem, uh, which is called one of these mixture problems. So it says zookeeper Claire, I just pictured Claire Baker, so I threw her name in here, needs to mix some feed for prairie dogs so that the feed has the right amount of protein. Feed A, let's kind of jot this down. Feed A is 12% protein. And feed B is 5% protein. And how many pounds of each type of feed does she need to mix to get 100 pounds of 8%? So somehow we want to put these guys together to get an 8% mixture. And we need, we need 100 pounds of it. Well, you know, if I give equal amounts, if you kind of split the difference between 12 and 7.5, you know, there's, that's a difference of 7. So if I went 3.5 in there, you know, 8.5 percent would be if I mixed equal amounts I get eight and a half percent since my final mixture is eight percent I know there's going to be a little bit more to this side than there is to that side so it's not going to be 50 pounds of each it's going to lean a little bit more of the B because my percentage is lower so that's just kind of something I do before I start the problem to kind of know about what the answer is but let me show you how to set this up so we need two equations. So the first thing that, that I know we need is let's let A equal the pounds of the 12% mixture and B is going to be the number of pounds of the 5% mixture. So here's what we know. We know that when I add all the pounds of A plus all the pounds of B, it adds up to be 100. So this is kind of like, this is the quantity equation. This is just the raw amount, the sheer weight. A plus B is 100. Um, but I still don't know, like, is it 1 in 99? Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? So now we got to make one with the percentages. Um, but I know that A, 12% of the A, so you do 0.12 times A, is going to be protein. And then 0.05B is going to be the protein in the B pounds. And my final mixture needs to be 8% of, and we know we need 100 pounds. I know what A plus B is, it's 100. So those are my two equations that I now need to kind of solve. So it's totally up to you um, whether you want to use substitution, whether you want to use elimination. Um, it's kind of your world. It's however you want to go with it. I'm going to use, I don't know, I think I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use elimination here because I see that, you know, if this is 1 and this is 1, I think I can turn that 0 0.05 into 1 by multiplying by 20. So I'm going to eliminate. A lot of people would probably substitute here, but I think you guys are good at that. So I want to do another example. Of elimination. So let's try it. Top equation we're not messing with. You know, 1a plus 1b. The ones are not really necessary, but whatever. If I multiply by 20, 20 times 0 0.12, where well, that's going to be 2.4a. And if I multiply 0 0.05 by 20, that gives me my 1b. And I just realized I need opposites. So I think I'm going to multiply by negative 20. Kind of forgot about the opposite part. And that's going to give me a minus 1b. So now they'll cancel because that's what I was hoping to do. And well, 0.8 times 100, that's basically, this comes out to be just 8. So a negative 20 times 8, well, that's a negative 160. And now I think I'm, I'm ready to combine. 
because I have opposites. So 1 take away 2.4, that's a negative 1.4a equals a negative 60. And I'm going to divide both sides. Divide by a negative 1.4. Divide by a negative 1.4. And I'm going to cheat and use my calculator. So 60 divided by negative 1.4 is roughly 42.85. So we could round that, I guess. 42.857. Let's just call that 42.9 to make this problem a little easier. And if you round it a little bit different, that's no big deal. So... We need 42.9 pounds of A. Well, that kind of, I can now substitute it in this equation because if you have 42.9 of A added to B, it needs to add up to 100. So when I subtract from both sides, it looks like that would be what, 58, 57.1 about. So there's my pounds of B, there's my pounds of A. I now could mix these two up and have the right mixture. Um, you do this a lot like in chemistry where you have two different strength solutions and you're trying to get a, a, a third different strength. You know, maybe you buy it and it only comes in two different types of strength. Uh, I know I've done this before with hydrogen peroxide. Like hydrogen peroxide, the stuff you buy at the store uh, in the little like brown bottle is like 3%. And food grade... I want to say is somewhere like 34%. Well, sometimes when you're disinfecting or cleaning something, you might want to come up with like an 18% solution or whatever the, the problem calls for. So this is another example of a mixture type of problem. And I think there's a coffee example in our homework. So hopefully this gives you at least a little, a little bit of a head start and some insight onto the problems. See you.